Hi, my name is Roger Hicks and in this video I'll be showing you how to use the web-based 8-bit tracker Pulseboy. Pulseboy is pretty simplistic compared to other trackers like FamiTracker and MadTracker. Um, it just simplifies everything. So this would probably be a good tracker for beginners or for people who just want to make chiptune music really fast. With that said, let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is a grid that has 16 columns and 16 rows. So basically each column is considered a track that has its own set of mixing knobs and sounds associated with it. In each column you can record exactly 16 notes. So let's record our first note in track one, note one. Also you might hear me use track and column interchangeably because they're basically the same thing. So just letting you know. To record, click the circle or record button at the top. When the record button is red, it'll allow you to record notes into the grid. When it's black, it won't. It's pretty much a safety feature so that you don't start putting notes in when you don't realize it. To input a note in track one, note one, click the top left square in the grid and click a key on one of the piano keys to the right. You can also press the corresponding key on your keyboard so that you don't have to keep using your mouse. So for example, I click the A piano key, which corresponds to the letter N key on an English keyboard. After placing the note in track one, let's see how it actually sounds in the song. So click the play button at the top left. You'll notice that the note actually plays on forever until you press stop. So what if we wanna actually stop a note? All you have to do is actually place a stop note after the previously played note. To place a stop note, you can either press the space bar on your keyboard or just click the stop note button under the piano keys. Now let's see what it sounds like after we place the stop note. So as you just saw, it actually stops the note exactly where we want it to stop. Another thing you might notice is the fact that the note in the grid actually has a number beside it. The number actually represents the octave that the note is played at. To increase the octave, Click the right arrow beside the word octave at the top right. To decrease the octave, click the left arrow. So let's assume we've already placed uh, several notes in the grid already and we just want to increase the speed of the song. All you have to do is click the box under the letters BPM, which stands for beats per minute and you can type in a number. Um, currently the number is set to 50 beats per minute, but I am going to change it to 300 or 200. Now after pressing play, you'll notice that the song plays much faster. So what if we want a different sound for a specific track? Well, Pulse Boy has access to square waves, pulse waves, triangle waves, um, noise channels, and drum samples. So if you wanted a different sound for a specific track, all you have to do is click the button right above each track. The image on the button will actually represent the waveform of the sound. So as you can see, um, clicking the button will actually cycle through the different waveforms, um, pulse waves, square waves, triangle waves. All right, um, so far we've just been working with 16 notes for our song but obviously most songs are more than just 16 notes so in order to add more notes you want to uh, click the add page button to the right which is pretty self-explanatory you can also click the copy page button to copy a page and then the paste page button to paste that same page onto a new page so you don't have to keep repeating things you can also press control to copy a specific track and P to paste that track into a new track. So what if we want to modify the mix of a specific track? Well, as I mentioned earlier in the video, each track has its own set of um, knobs such as volume, pan, highs, lows, and you can basically turn up the volume, turn down the volume, turn the pan to left and right, um, turn the highs up or down, turn the lows up or down. 
by just dragging the knobs up or down. You can also modify the properties of a specific note to the bottom right. So let's say I wanna make it sound like this note is fading out. So basically I turn down the volume of each note um, gradually so that it sounds like it's fading out. When I get more time, I'll actually implement a automation feature so that you don't actually have to modify each note to make it fade out or change the pitch or whatever. So now that we know how to make a song in Pulse Boy, I'm actually going to try to cover um, a song from one of my favorite games, Kirby. All right, I got a little bit lazy, but I think it's close enough to the original version of the song for you to recognize. Here, I'll play for you. I'll actually put the link to the project file in the video or actually on the site so people can download it and actually uh, mess around with it. One last thing I wanted to mention was that you'll notice that there are two buttons to the very top right of the screen. One says JIT and one says non-JIT. JIT means just in time, which in this case, it basically means everything is being rendered on the fly. Um, non-JIT means that it basically compiles the whole thing and then it runs it. It really doesn't have to really process it that much. It just reads it and plays it. So for slower computers like netbooks, you'll want to run it in non-JIT mode because they just suck at actually rendering things on the fly. Um, and it's partially because of Flash. In order to make Flash produce sound as precise as I have it producing it, it takes a pretty decent amount of uh, processing power. So that's probably why you're going to have to use non-JIT for slower computers. Hopefully this video helped you and made you want to actually make more chiptune music with Pulse Boy, or if not, at least try out other um, more advanced trackers. And um, if you have any questions or if you find any bugs, um, I'll actually put a link in the video and on the Pulse Boy website where you can report bugs, questions, or new features that you might want to see added to the next version. Oh, and uh, shout out to my friend CTPLR or Caterpillar. Um, I don't even know if she pronounces it that way, but she makes really sweet remixes and composes really cool music. So uh, check her stuff out. I'll actually put a link to her stuff as well. She really pushed me to stop being lazy and put out this uh, tutorial. So thanks to her, you guys actually have a tutorial now. All right. I'll catch you guys later.